So we're back in the workshop and I'm here with my good friend Gabriella from Alas Cosplay Adventure. She's a very talented, magnificent cosplayer. Um, and since we're both based in Malta, we thought we would make something together. We've got wool cloth, we've got leather straps, we've got more leather, we've got fake wool fur. Um, we've got lots of tools and, well, limited amount of time. But let's make something. Uh, what's the plan? Can you run us through what's going to happen, how this works and at least the process of how it goes? Okay, so basically, first of all, we need to measure a um, cart. We're going to be making the cape for cart. We need to check the length and how wide we would want the cape to be. Um, we're going to be using the semicircle method to create the cape. So basically, we'll be using um, circles to measure around the cape. Um, we'll add some fur as well to the top to give it more of a medieval feel, um, a witcher style cape. So. I'm very happy about that. Again, this is something for witcher school. We've got a lot of friends um, from other YouTube channels and other makers abroad who are very very jealous of us that are going to <laughs> Witcher school so <laughs> so what will we be using what will we need um, so we would need wool preferably wool um, we can use felt for a cheaper option however um, since we'll be doing a time time period cape it's better to use wool um, fake fur we might add leather to add some belts or some accents to the mm. cape we also have uh, another kind of leather. This is actually lighter in the underneath. Mm -hmm. So um, this is actually the top, the the surface of the leather. But we can use both sides. Yeah, I mean, side. if that is needed, it's quite thin, and we can cut it easily with a cutter. So, yeah, and sure, I think um, really our imagination is the limit this time. It's true. Exactly. Um, so. so, how do we start? So we need to take some measurements first. We'll be taking the height. We'll be checking the color as well, how wide we would want the color area to be. Um, and we'll try and fit it into, we have, I think, two meters of yeah. wool. So we'll try and fit the cape into the yeah. So Okay, well, I think let's get started then. I just want to start by saying that this footage was actually shot back in the summer of 2019, way before our first Witcher School adventure, and it's just taking me so long to put this video together and just get it done, so apologies for that. But I hope you enjoy it nonetheless. We started off by taking some measurements, we discussed the shape of the cape, and we also discussed how long it would be, how it would wrap around me, what embellishments we'd do for it, and we just had a quick conversation. But then we quickly started getting uh, into uh, drawing like basic shapes and basic lines, which we would follow later on for cutting and um, for trimming the cape. I also just want to take a minute to thank Gabby for this uh, really awesome experience. Uh, she's clearly a pro when it comes to these kinds of things. She's a genius with the material that she's given and she's done countless, um, countless uh, costumes over the years. And it clearly shows through her expertise. We just sat on the garage floor, just uh, started working and it was just a lot of fun. Uh, it took me back to my childhood really when I used to just uh, spend time in the garage and craft or, or play or something and honestly it was just a huge success. At the end of the day the cape came out looking really really great as you'll see at the end of the video and it was just a lot of fun for Gabby and myself to just uh, talk about crafting, talk about making stuff and actually making something which is really awesome. I can confirm that the cape looks awesome as I said and that I've taken it to various events now already and all everyone who sees it um, they always are um, always fascinated by how we actually managed to pull it off. I have to admit that capes aren't difficult to make um, so there was definitely not a lot of thinking or, or you know processing done to this sort of project however we did encounter some problems like for example i did not buy enough material so we had to improvise over here to see how the cape would wrap around me or whether it would be long enough and gabby just came up with an idea where we would cut uh, like sort of these triangle shapes sew them onto the front and it would make the cape look like one whole piece the seam doesn't really show and it's a testament to gabby's skill and expertise in this kind of field and honestly uh, it's not something that i could have just come up with myself so um yeah, I mean, this just goes to show when, uh, you know, when someone knows what they're doing, uh, it actually comes out looking a lot better. But this was definitely a huge learning experience for, for me. 
Um, I was really looking forward to this and honestly I learned quite a lot on the different techniques and tools used to make something like this. I'm not much of a tailor myself but I do double every now and then and this was definitely a learning experience. Once we had the shape cut out we pinned it to make sure that uh, all, both pieces remained the, the, the same way, uh, we cut them equally. Basically what we had here was a folded piece of, uh, of wool. Once we cut it, then we made sure to have a little bit extra on the side so that we could seam, and that is my pin cushion, or rather my mother's pin cushion, Sebastian the crab. So yeah. <laughs> This was also a great trick, neat trick, um, where Gabby used baking paper to make a template, then I just cut it on my cutting mat. Like, I, I can't believe it used to look so neat, the cutting mat back then. Um, so yeah. These are the triangle shapes that I was talking about earlier. Um, these will basically be sewn to the front of the cape to make it wrap around me a little bit uh, better. What's this machine? So um, it's an overlock, some people refer to it as a serger as well. Um, basically it will straighten out the edges, so we have a raw edge over here where we trim the fabric, so it's spraying and it's quite difficult to sew two fabrics, two fraying fabrics together. So we pass the fabric through an overlock and we get a smooth edge and it will trim away all the excess spraying threads and spraying fabric on the edges. Um, you can also sew two pieces of fabric together and pass them through the serger. However, since we're using a quite a thick fabric, it's mm. better to do it one at a time, one at a time okay. and then sew it together with um, a sewing machine. Okay. So, so what do we do from here? We need to go through all the edges <laughs> slowly. So I'm um, going to start here. So always have the, the fabric on this side. And um, you always do the line. edge. Yes. And then even if you're going to ham it later. Yes, exactly. Because it will it will be much neater even if the cape is flying okay. around and you won't have like a lot of fraying okay. threads and it will be neater a little bit. So make sure that it's steady and always keep it straight because so, it has a cutter in it. So um, yeah. if the fabric moves a bit to the side, it will ruin your fabric. Yeah. So. Um, and you control the speed and the tension, so it has like tension buttons, so you can fix the amount of um, thread you want to put through. So, so it's really always keeping the line with the sides. Okay. So you can alter how much you want this. There's like a measuring ruler as well. You can take it okay. out. And so we're just going to do that. Once we trimmed all the edges and used the serger, the overlock to trim all the edges, we started pinning everything together so that we could run it through the sewing machine over here and just start putting the cape together. And that was basically it for the basic shape of the cape. Once again, Gabby is a pro at this kind of thing. I'm not so much, but she actually stood by me and actually taught me a fair bit. So obviously in future projects, I didn't do so badly. Growing up, my mother used to sew a lot of curtains and clothes, so the sewing machine was always a huge part of my childhood. It's something that is iconic to me. So having a project like this, where I was sewing and using the sewing machine really felt good. And honestly, it makes me just want to sew and make these kinds of projects more often. 
We use some fake wool fur to embellish the cape just over the shoulder. It's a huge, it's a really good feeling to have something like that on the on the cape. Uh, however, I can assure you that working with it was a little bit of a nightmare because we kept finding fake wool fur on the, in the garage floor uh, for weeks to come. Uh, all we did was just use some clasps, clips, whatever you want to call them, to attach the fur to the cape so I can easily remove it if I don't want to. And I just tried it on to see how it fits and it fits really nicely. Just knocked out a quick belt with a buckle in a couple of minutes and Gabby just sewed it on uh, using some long needles and some thread which I use for leather sewing and basically that was it. I was so excited that we finished the cape and that, that how awesome it looked that I didn't even realize that the camera was not focused. Um, so I just really enjoyed a few minutes just wearing the cape and running around the house uh, like an idiot. Uh, but yeah, that's all well. We were in a bit of a hurry, however, here, so we couldn't really shoot the ending bit of the video. In fact, that is what actually we've been waiting for for quite some time. And then obviously this COVID business hit, so it's unlikely that we'll do it anytime soon. But I still want to really thank Gabriella for sticking by me for this project and for making it look so cool. Wouldn't have been able to do this without her, definitely. So don't forget to check out her page. I hope you enjoyed this video and see you next time.